Sometimes it feels like the sun will never rise, like the birds will never sing again. Believe in a power greater than what you are going through when you don't know what to do. That's right. When you don't know what to do, just keep on breathing. From the City of Angels in Los Angeles and from the Big Apple in New York City, welcome to all my listeners out there at Radio Land. I'm Dave, the Caregiver's Caregiver at caregiverdave.com, along with my lovely co-host, Adrian Gruberg at thecaregiverspace.org. We're also coming to you live and on demand 24-7 on numerous syndicated radio and podcast networks on 26, count them, 26 global audio video platforms including iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Spreaker, SoundCloud, Vimeo, Stitcher, Blog Talk Radio, CastBox, MixCloud, and just so many more. In fact, we are proud to be voted number one caregiver podcast of the top 50 on Player FM and number two caregiver podcast on Feedspot out of the top 60. That's huge. And number two on CaringVillage.com. And we have an especially exciting show planned for you today, don't we, Adrian? Yeah, we do. She's never wrong. <laughs> Kathy Murphy has been caregiving for 42 and a half years. Her son, Matt, is Down syndrome, 18 months, two year level. He is nonverbal, uses sign language to communicate. He's always required 24 7 care. Yeah. And then, and about seven years ago, she noticed that he was regressing. Finally got the diagnosis that he now has Alzheimer's. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. Down syndrome people start progressively aging at age 30. And by the time they're 50, they're about 50% of them have Alzheimer's. Something about the extra gene in that 23rd chromosome. I did not know that. Me neither. All that Down syndrome years were easy, but the Alzheimer's <laughs> is hell, as they say. Sundowning. Incontinence, eating problems, agitation, horrible for all caregivers. Uh, and he's nonverbal. He's right. nonverbal, he just like my him. wife. But he has a benefit to my wife. He can speak sign language. My wife can't speak any language except a word here and there, like a two year old. You know, they know a few words, like my great granddaughter understands everything. But uh, it's interesting the new words she picks up every day. But. <laughs> She's online with Alzheimer's caregivers from around the world, and they support each other 24 hours a day. Thank God. Are they really there 24 hours a day? Some of them don't sleep, or I guess on the other side of the world, they're sleeping when you're up. So thank God for caregiver sites, right? So welcome okay. to the show, Kathy. And I have Adrian, my co-host. Hi, Adrian. Nice to meet you. Hi, nice Hello. to meet you. Matt will be Matt will be 29 in a few weeks. So I'm almost at 50 years of caregiving. Well, so. and you had a husband for a few of those years, did you? Only three. <laughs> and he decided that wasn't uh, his ministry. <laughs> no, it was mine. And, and we had six children. You had six children? Uh, yes. I raised wow. six by myself with Matt in the middle of it. Right in the middle? In middle age? Oh, he's the next to the youngest. My youngest daughter is is a. Oh my gosh, you're a saint. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm and you did it all by yourself. Oh yes. Well, no. You and God. Say that. God first. <laughs> family, fam, friends. You do not raise anybody that you're caregiving for if you have half a brain by yourself. It takes, <laughs> it, it takes a village, doesn't it? Absolutely. And it took me 37 years before I learned to say, I need help. 37 years. Oh, my gosh. Um, 75% of the time. Yes. Well, what should we talk about, Kathy? We can talk about so many things. Well, I made a list of some of the things because there's caregivers on here. And I mean, because I've had so many years and I work with hospice with the caregivers and find resources for them. We are very fortunate where I live that someone with a lot of money, we need, that's my doorbell. Uh, <laughs> uh, somebody who had a lot of money 
donated a building, had it built for caregivers to you use. Want to, you want to take a minute or two to see who's at the door? No, I'm I'm sitting in front of the door. She if a fly flies by, she has to bark at it. I see. Um, <laughs> Good watchdog. <I> understand. <laughs> We have classes that are taught by the professors at the college. This is all free for any caregivers. We do yoga. Now everything is Zoom just about. They have physicians who are retired that go to doctor's appointments with people if there's things that they need to know. We show people how to make a bed with people in it, how to Mm -hmm. use a transport chair, how to get somebody up if they fall without injuring them or them or yourself. Right. Um, and so it's a really, really, really great thing for any caregiver because when they discharge somebody from the hospital, you get five minutes of instructions and then you get sent home and you're all by yourself. <laughs> and it's it's my doorbell. Oh, well, good. I'm not the only the, one. We're, we're my dead. dog's the only one who's well behaved. Oh, <laughs> Well, I made a list of a couple of things. And one of my biggest priorities as a caregiver is because I knew about Down syndrome. Obviously, Matt was born that way. I had to learn about it. But when he got Alzheimer's, I was totally oblivious. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I just thought like everybody else, Alzheimer's people forget. And that's what happens. Well, that isn't the case. And so I know all about it. So the first thing I'm telling any caregiver is learn all you can about the disease. Find a support group. I mean, we can say anything in our support groups. And I learned things from them. Matt could no longer. He takes 14 pills twice a day. He could no longer swallow with those pills with liquid. So I was having to crush all these suckers up and mix them up. And oh, it was a horrible mess. And I'm sure it tasted wonderful. Oh, yeah. It looked horrible, too. But uh, (laughs) and I'd have to do one pill at a time. So it was taken forever. And somebody in the support group said, well, I give my wife her meds with applesauce. Wow. I mean, great. Matt loves the applesauce. It gives him fruit. He can swallow his pills. Never thought of it. So, I mean, I'm still learning at 50 years in. The third thing is. Get a doctor that knows about the disease. You might have had the same doctor your whole life, but if he doesn't know about the disease that you're caring for your loved one, you got to find a new doctor. You're right. Absolutely. Because these diseases, and I don't mean just Alzheimer's, but any disease that you're dealing with, if you don't, if your physician doesn't understand that, you're in trouble. Yeah. And get find a caregiver. As a caregiver, it's nice to think that you can do it. You can't. You can't. You cannot take care of that person 24-7 by yourself because you're killing you. And it's not good for the person you're taking care of. They need to have somebody else in their life besides you. Now, finances is a problem for a lot of people. Um, I don't know what your financial situation is, but what does someone do if, you know, they just can barely put food on the table and pay the rent? Well, I told you, Georgia, and I did look that up and I sent you that information. We are very fortunate that Georgia has this program that is non-taxable money. I get almost $1,500 a month. I spend a thousand on caregiving. Uh, But other things that you can spend it on, I have to submit a sheet every single night to the they have to be on Medicaid and you have to live with that person. So you can be paid for their care and the money is not taxable. You hear that? Georgia is a caregiver uh, friendly state. I guess Rosalind Rosalind Carter has something to do with that. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other I thing never was, thought of that. <laughs> if you're dealing with somebody that he has a mental thing, and there's a bunch of them besides Alzheimer's, and I mean, there's just so many. But if you know that your person that you're caring for, whether it's your parents, your spouse, 
in my case, it's a child where I don't have to deal with this. Uh, get your finances in order while they are still able to do it with you. Your house that's in both your names, uh, it better be in the caregiver's name. Really? A lot, your finances, all that stuff that they are no longer at down the road going to be able to have anything to do with. And so, believe so if it's in their name and they're incompetent, you got a problem, huh? Right. A, a car, the house, anything, your bank account. Wow. The other thing is advanced, uh, advanced directive and living will. Well, they still know what they right. want. Yes. They should be able to make those decisions. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I did that with my aunt who has uh, dementia, beginning dementia. And um, my sister uh, took everything out of her name, put it in her name, you know, the bank accounts, uh, all mm -hmm. the bills come there and she just pays the bills. And I take care of all of the, uh, uh, the medical issues and stuff or the doctor appointments, et cetera. And uh, it's just so much easier that way. And oh, yeah. so you've got so many kids. They help, I assume, I hope. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. I make one, <laughs> phone, call. one phone call. My wow. children are well trained. What is the secret? How did you train them to respond to one phone call? Well, I was not the kissy, huggy, lovey mom. <laughs> I was, uh, is your job done? And I insisted that my children were at the dinner table every night, even if they were going in their teens and going out on a date, because I worked 12 hour days. I wanted to see their faces mm -hmm. and they could get up from the dinner table and go out to eat if they wanted to. But my children were at that dinner table every single day. Wow. And they all stayed in Georgia. No, two of them. One lives in Pennsylvania and one lives in, well, he has a house in Tennessee. Her husband's a minister and they do, uh, they travel all over the world. They're never at their house. And speaking of Pennsylvania, um, you probably found out that uh, Dr. Oz won his election because his Republican challenger conceded. Yes, Don't I know. Don't know why, but he did. So good for him. He may yes. be the next president of the United States. Who knows? Yeah, that's well, we won't go into that. We don't do politics. No, we won't go into that. We'll go into that. <laughs> but I think he'll be a good senator. Yes. Well, we have a great Carter is great here. Yeah. And I mean, as far as caregiving, he was a pharmacist. And like one of my son's meds went from Four thousand. Thank God for Medicaid. Thank you, God, for Medicaid. <laughs> One of my son's prescriptions went from four thousand dollars. That's for 30 pills in a bottle to <gasps> six thousand in the last six weeks. Wow. And another went from eight hundred dollars to fourteen hundred dollars. And I thought, my God, what do people do who don't have? I mean, even if you have insurance, that That's kind of Matt's meds are over ten thousand a month. I mean, there's no way. I don't know what to do about that. Well, that's they have ads on TV for most of these. I think we're paying for the ads. So how do we get uh, approved for Medicaid? Um, how did you do it? Well, my income. I mean, you can't have lots of money. And you have to do it through, we call our family and children's service place, DFACS. And you have to go there and you start there. And I have to renew it every year. And it just blows me away because I'm coming in wow. with Matt who obviously is Down syndrome, so you look at him and you know that. He's in a wheelchair, and the first thing they say to me is, did he work this year? <laughs> <laughs> no. Would you like him to be trained for a job? And I, one day I was just, I'd just been in line for too long, and I said to the lady, is there a job for testing at, my, at McDonald's or Pizza? Because he'd be good at that. <laughs> Then when I'm leaving one day, she says to me, you know, Matt could be a voter. I said, he could, huh? As long as he votes Democrat. <laughs> I'm serious. I thought, oh, my God, they're letting people like Matt vote. To the caregivers out there, I mean, I am very blessed, truly blessed, because of the people, my church, everyone that's been in my life. I could not do what I do 
without the support. And yep. people like Dave with his, and we've talked to a couple of people that he has on there. Well, one in particular. And like he said, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. There are things out there and you got to research them to you make your life better. Yeah. I mean, go online, go to, go to wherever. But if you get in a support group, somebody in there might give you something that you need to know, like applesauce for pills. Such a simple little thing. I just never thought of it. And it made my life and Matt's life so much nicer. So tell us, because we don't know, what all the things you do for caregiving. Because you do as much as me, I think. Maybe more. I don't know. But that's my... I don't do crafts or anything else. I like to cook. But other than that, that is my outreach. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is what I give back to me. Like but, you, I'm sure, get a lot out of your caregiving things. Yeah. So how do, you, how do you minister to the caregivers uh that uh, you know how do you what's what caregiver group do you meet at uh that you help other people and share the ideas back and forth well right now we're all meeting on zoom this pandemic okay. has killed us killed okay. us so before uh covid you were meeting in person oh yeah at that caregiving building that there is in savannah hmm. uh and we we'll never get back to that well i hope we do I hope life gets back soon. Face to face is so important when it comes to support, but at least there's Zoom. <laughs> oh, yes. And I do yoga three times a week on Zoom. And the meditation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if only I bought Zoom stock before the <laughs> pandemic, I'd be a rich man today. Oh, yes. It really went up. Space. Well, I mean, I don't know what we would have done. I would not. I, I couldn't get through my life without Zoom because it's my only social sometimes. Mm -hmm. I mean, Matt used to go to a, a medical care facility where he got physical therapy and speech and occupational therapy every day. I would drop him at nine in the morning and I would pick him up at three in the afternoon. And I had all that time to do whatever I chose to do. And it closed because it was a medical care facility. The right. people going there couldn't wear masks. And most of them came on transport buses, which meant they couldn't keep the six foot distance. Mm. So they never were cleared to reopen. So they sold the business. Oh, oh, I'm telling you, you, you don't think I cried. He, oh, loved I'm sure. he went there for seven and a half years. They loved him. And when he was in the combative stage of Alzheimer's, where honestly, I would get there and he'd be so bad, I'd say, I'm not bringing him in. And they'd say, there are eight of us. There's one of you. Get yeah. out of here. And they would take him. And I mean, he was horrible. It took us months to figure out his meds to where we could get him level and not stupefied. I want him to be able to enjoy life. Yes. Yeah, so so oh, are you writing a book, uh, Kathy? Oh, I have several chapters. <laughs> What's it about? Oh, you know, it's about being a single mom. When I hear people that say, well, I can't do that because I have two kids, I laugh. <laughs> I mean, I owned a preschool. Thank you, God. I love children. Obviously, love kids. I better. But my degree was in early childhood. And when my husband left, there was a, a daycare up for sale. And I taught Sunday school and one of the guys in there was an attorney and he came over to me and he said, I don't mean to be nosy, but I understand that your husband left and you've got all these kids to support. I said, yeah, but I haven't worked in a couple of years. He said, well, I have a daycare and these, this lady, she's the woman that owns it is dying. None of her family members want anything to do with it. He said, are you interested? I said, well, you know, I mean, this is buying property. And this is in the 70s where females had no credit, even if you paid all the bills. And I said, well, I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. He said, well, I have my accountant and I that'll back you in it. We'll give you a year to pay us back the money. I paid him back in 90 days. Wow. My children all able to go there. 
And but I worked 12 hours a day. I mowed the grass there. I mowed it at my house. I painted there. I painted at my house. Uh, My son said to me when he had his first child, there was property near me for sale. And he said, Mom, how about if I buy that property and we'll build the daycare? And all you have to do is run it. I said, oh, my dead body. (laughs) I was like 55. He said, well, you loved it. I said, yeah, when I was 20 and 30, dear. (laughs) Now I'm 77. I don't want to do that stuff anymore. (laughs) Wow. I can't believe how fast our time has gone today, Kathy. Thanks so much for coming on the show. And um, if somebody wants to just talk to you, chew your ear, uh, how is the best way to get a hold of you? My email. Which is? Is capital B. All the rest of them. B-U-B-B-I-E. 16 grand at gmail.com. My grandchildren set that up and my, they all call me Bubby. I have 16 Bubby. grands, six children, five in-laws, 16 grandchildren, and nine great grand. So I have a tribe. Wow. They you all do. language. So it's Bubby with a B like boy, B U B B I E. What's the next thing? 16. One six and grand, like grandkids, yeah. G-R-A-N-D. And at gmail.com. At gmail.com. Well, that's before the ad, huh? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Thank you for having me on here. I hope that any of the information that, that I gave out will help just one person. But I'm if you sure it will help more than yeah. one person. Yes. Yes. Please get a support group. Those people understand where you're coming from. And when you have days, and we all as caregivers have them, even Dave. (laughs) (laughs) We would like to rip our hair out. You notice he's bald. Yeah, Yeah, I don't rip my hair out anymore. I rip my beard out. You can talk to the people in these in these caregivers group, and they're not going to call the police on you. (laughs) And they're not going to call me back. And they're going to understand where you're coming from. And they're there for you. And even if you haven't reached the point that you're at, you might have given them a little hope for when they reach this point. I had eye surgery. I'm still black and blue. What what kind of surgery? Eye surgery. They had to go muscles behind my eyeballs. I told him I didn't want him to tell me what what he was doing. Just do it. (laughs) (laughs) And what is he trying to correct? I had double vision. I was having to drive with my oh. hand, my left oh. eye in order to drive, and that wasn't too safe. You doing okay, Adrian? Yes, I'm doing fine. Good. I'm just glad everything is okay on your end. Yeah, it is. Just trying to hire more people for the gas station. It's the joy of owning your business, right? How much are you charging for gas? Well, if you want premium and you're willing to pay with your credit card, it'll cost you seven dollars and seven cents a gallon. Seven? How much? Seven oh seven. Wow. And and for regular? Regular? Oh, we have a sale on regular. It's only six ninety seven. Oh my lord! And uh, if you pay cash, you can get it for six forty-seven. Where are you? Los Angeles, highest gas mm-hmm. in the country. That's right. We ours have, is four dollars and something. Yeah, why isn't ours four dollars and something? Five, six—that's three dollars. Yes, I'm glad I don't live there. It's all going to the state of California because they have the highest taxes in the world, sales tax, excise tax, environmental tax, and they don't build refineries because they don't believe in fossil fuel. And that's why gas is so expensive because they have all these smog regulations on it. It has to have this, it has to have that. In the summertime, you got to add this and add that. No other state uh gasoline is good enough so we're we're like a little island 
Wow. Wow. And well, you know, the gas station the- wasn't bolted to the ground. I'd be out of there. And my wife, <laughs> my wife would let me. Uh, sure. <laughs> well, our senator just decided that the state of Georgia wasn't going to charge state tax on gas here. Were they charging? Yeah. I mean, it's supposed to go through, I think, July 1st. A lot, of, a lot of states are considering yeah. it. It's not California. <laughs> <laughs> Thank well, you for doing this. Thank you. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you all, everyone who tunes in every Wednesday. Remember, all our live shows become recorded podcasts and videocasts on your favorite platforms. And you can purchase my new, my number one newly released book. I think uh, Bobby is already, uh, Bobby, Kathy. <laughs> yes. Only your grandchildren can call you Bobby. Uh, I, I think she's already read it and we're waiting for a review from Amazon. <laughs> Secrets from the Hammock, Uncommon Wisdom for Uncommon Times, great book that's changing lives all over the world, especially here in America, available wherever books are sold and my website, caregiverdave.com. It's a free membership. And it's a free membership support community with lots of tools, resources, free gifts, and check out my Facebook page, Caregiver Dave, a community of 34,000 caregivers. And Adrian also has chat rooms and lots of support. On her site, the caregiverspace.org, and her Facebook page, Caregiver, the Caregiver Space, with 160,000 followers. She's doing really good with that. And if you click the like or follow button on whatever platform you're watching or listening to this interview on, it helps us reach even more caregivers by improving Google's search engine algorithms. So thank you again. Thanks for making us the number one caregiver podcast on the internet. So until next week, Same time, same channel. May God richly bless you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. I'm Dave Nassani. My fourth book, Secrets from the Hammock, Uncommon Wisdom for Uncommon Times, is a number one bestseller on Amazon. As a young boy, I was told I possessed an unusual amount of wisdom for my age. As a young man, I found myself counseling friends and older family members whenever they needed answers to their problems. Then at 21, I read the Bible for the very first time and learned how King Solomon asked God for wisdom instead of riches, yet he received both. I was so impressed that I too asked God for wisdom. Soon after, I discovered when lying on my hammock, I would receive wisdom from God This book is the result of my passion to share with the world wisdom's tremendous benefits. Join me as I reveal practical aspects of wisdom for the mind, body, and spirit. 31 lessons I learned from God that can change your life. Available in hardcover, audible, Kindle, and paperback, wherever books are sold. I've spoken all over the country and London, and am available to speak at your event. Contact me at hammockwisdom.com. Sometimes it feels like the sun will never rise, like the birds will never sing. Uh.